Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go through section 2.2 of the lab handout for lab 1, which is determining the pulse response and measuring it on the oscilloscope using the AD2. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off to generating a pulse with width 1 millisecond and amplitude 100 millivolts. Now again, a pulse does not exist by default in the AD2. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to modify a square wave so that for our purposes it looks as if it's a short pulse. Now before we do that let's just make sure our oscilloscope is configured correctly. Our, let me stop this. Our channel 1 and channel 2 are each going to have 15 millivolts per division, per division. 15 millivolts per division. And our time axis is going to be the same as in part 1, 1 millisecond per division. Now, we're going to have to change our trigger to be 15 millivolt because we're going to only have a 100 millivolt amplitude. So if the trigger is 500 millivolts, we won't get any output because we, it won't pass the trigger value. So, since the, the yellow knob has flew out of the screen, I'm going to just change it here to 50 millivolts. Okay, and now we, as you can see here, the trigger is set at 50 millivolts. Again, let's just double check, repeated, normal, channel 1, rising, and trigger 50 millivolts. Now we have to go set the waveform generator to produce a short pulse. Now, like I said, a short pulse doesn't exist by default. So what we're going to do is we're going to produce a non-symmetric square wave that's going to represent a short pulse. So what do I mean by that? We're going to have a square wave that's on for 1% of, of, of its period, and that 1% of its period is going to be 1 millisecond. And then it's going to be off for the remaining 99% of its period. And so that will give pl it plenty of time for the capacitor transients to die out, and it'll look as if we just applied a short pulse. So, first, let's make sure we have simple square wave type. We're going to change the period to 100 milliseconds. And we're going to change the amplitude to 50 millivolts and the offset to 50 millivolts. So now we have a square wave from 0 to 100 millivolts. And now we're going to change the symmetry to 1%. So this square wave is going to be on for 1% of its 100 millisecond period, or 1 millisecond. So it's going to be on for 1 millisecond, like a short pulse. And then it's going to be off for the rema remaining 99 milliseconds. Now this works because we're going to only plot it up to 5 milliseconds. So it'll look as if we have a short pulse here, and then it's off. So, with that, let's head back over to our oscilloscope plot and press single. And we get our correct output. Now, I just realized that my position is at five, minus 5 milliseconds. This position should always be at 0 milliseconds. And now let me press single again. And here we have the correct output. Now, if you recall in the introduction, and you, you probably already do also derive this in your pre-lab, that for t's between 0 and 1 milliseconds, we see the same step response as we did in the previous part. Now, if our t is greater than 1 millisecond, we see this sort of decaying exponential, which is exactly what we expect, because now the input is 0 volts, so the capacitor is going to discharge through the resistor. So, we're happy with this output. Let's click export. We'll get, we need to export both CSV data and an image data. So, click save to save the image first. Save and save the image. I already happen to have it saved. And then to save the CSV data, head over to data and click save. Now, something additional is that by default, the CSV data has time and both channel 1 and channel 2. If you want to split channel 1 and channel 2 into separate CSV files, what you can do is head over to this drop-down menu and click channel 1, and you can save just the CSV data for channel 1. Now, if you do that, don't forget to save the data for channel 2, because otherwise you'll have to go back and repeat this part of the lab. In any case, once you have it saved, click cancel, and it's saved. Now, in this part, we're also going to collect data and images for pulses of duration 0.5 milliseconds, amplitude 200 millivolts, and duration 0.1 millisecond and high level 1 volt. Now something you should have already noticed is that 
in each one of these parts, parts of this section 2.2, we're making the duration of the pulse shorter. So we're making the width here shorter, and we're making the, the amplitude of the height higher. And that should trigger something in your mind. You should think is that what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to approximate a delta function. And as we make this shorter and shorter and taller and taller, it's approaching delta of t, and then our output approaches the impulse response h of t of the RC circuit. Because we call the impulse response is the response of the circuit when the input is delta of t. So, in any case, let's head back over to our waveform generator. In part 2, we're going to have duration 0.5 milliseconds, high level 200 millivolts. So, I'm going to change the amplitude to 100 millivolts and the offset to 100 millivolts. So we have between 0 and 200 millivolts. And it's only going to be on for 0.5 seconds, for 0.5 milliseconds. So I'm going to change the period. I'm going to keep the symmetry the same, but I'm going to change the period to 50 milliseconds. So that way, it's on for 1% of its period, which is 0.5 milliseconds. Now, let's head back over to our oscilloscope plot, press single, and you should see this sort of output. Again, we made the pulse shorter, we made it taller, and now we see that the output is getting closer and closer to the impulse response of the IC circuit. We're happy with this, so head over to Export, save the image, click Save, and then save the data, and then once you're done, click Cancel. We have one more part left for this section of the lab, which is we're going to do a 0.1 millisecond short pulse with a high level 1 volt. So, I'm going to change the amplitude to 500 millivolts and change the offset to 500 millivolts. Now we have from 0 to 1 volt. And because our duration is 0.1 milliseconds, I'm going to use a period of 10 milliseconds. Because 10 milliseconds, then 1% of that is going to be 0.1 milliseconds. Now, for this we're going to have to adjust the settings on our oscilloscope because obviously right now this, this height is going to be 1 volt which won't fit on our screen. So, I'm going to keep the base time division the same, but I'm going to change this to 500 millivolts per division. Well, actually, let, let's do 250. 250 millivolts per division there, 250 millivolts per division there, I'm going to change the trigger to 0.5 volts, just for consistency, and I'm going to press single. Now, here's an issue that you might notice. You see, over here, because we're plotting from minus 10 to 10, we used a period of 10 milliseconds. So we're seeing the period of minus 1, right before the period of 0, the 0th period. So, what we need to do is I'm going to change the scale to be instead of 2 milliseconds per division, 1 millisecond per division. That's why it will only be plotting from minus 5 to 5. And actually, if you want to, to make the graph a little nicer, I can do something like 0.5 milliseconds per division, or maybe even 250. I'll, I'll go with 500. Alright. Now, let's press single again, just to make sure everything's okay. Head over to Exploit, Image, Save the image, and then under data, save the CSV data. All right, that is it for section 2.2 of lab one. Section 2.3 is a conceptual problem. There's only a post lab assignment for that part of the lab. There's no in lab portion. So in the next video, I'm going to head directly to problem 2.4 of the lab, where we're going to measure the RC circuit response with a short ramp input.